Good day, grade 11s. We know that light refracts as it moves across a boundary from one medium to the next. We also know that the refractive index of a specific substance can be calculated if we divide C, the speed of light in a vacuum, by V, the speed of light in the substance. We can write this as N equals C divided by V. The refractive index is related to the optical density of the substance and how quickly the light will travel in the substance. But have you wondered if there was a way we could relate the size of the angle of incidence to the angle of refraction? Well, actually, there is. In 1620, Dutch mathematician Willem Broad Snell discovered the trigonometrical relationship between the angles of incidence and refraction. This became known as Snell's Law. Snell's Law states that when light passes through one medium to another, the relationship between the angle of incidence and refraction is n1 sine theta 1 equals n2 sine theta 2. But what does this mean? Let us look at a diagram of refraction. In this diagram, you can see the ray incident ray hits a boundary and is refracted as it moves into the new medium. N1 is the refractive index of the medium in which the incident ray travels. Theta1 is the angle of incidence, the angle the incident ray makes with the normal. Now let us look at the refracted ray. N2 is the refractive index of the second medium. And theta2 is the angle between the refracted ray and the normal, the angle of refraction. So let us look at Snell's law again. Snell's law states that n1 sine theta 1 equals n2 sine theta 2. Let us use this equation to calculate the angle of refraction in a problem. Calculate the angle of refraction if light from the sun strikes water in a lake with an angle of incidence of 50 degrees. The refractive index of water is 1,33. Now we know that in order to solve any problem, we need to list our variables. We know that N1 is the same as the refractive index of air, which is taken as 1. And the refractive index of water, N2, is 1,33. We have also been told that the angle of incidence, theta 1, is 50 degrees. Now let's write down Snell's law. N1 times sine of theta 1 equals N2 times sine theta 2. Now, if we substitute into the equation, we get 1 times by sine 50, which equals 1,33 times by sine theta 2. If we simplify, we can see that sine theta 2 equals sine 50 degrees divided by 1,33. Therefore, the angle of refraction, theta 2, equals 35,17 degrees. The light enters the water with an angle of refraction of 35,17 degrees. Now we can use a combination of Snell's law and the equation for the refractive index to develop a new equation. We know that N1 equals C, the speed of light in a vacuum, divided by the speed of light in the substance, V. So we can substitute N1 equals C divided by V1, and N2 equals C divided by V2. This means that Snell's law can be written as C divided by V1 times sine theta 1 equals C divided by V2 times sine theta 2. We can rearrange this equation. So we can see that sine theta 1 divided by sine theta 2 equals C divided by V2 times V1 divided by C. The C's cancel in this equation. Therefore, we have sine theta 1 divided by sine theta 2 equals V1 divided by V2. Do you see that this equation relates the size of the angle to the velocity of the light wave in the substance? 
If you look at this equation, you will realize that the angle theta is larger in a medium in which the speed of light is faster. So let us summarize what we have learned in this lesson. Snell's law states that n1 sine theta 1 equals n2 sine theta 2. We can rearrange this equation. Sine theta 1 divided by sine theta 2 equals v1 divided by v2. We can use either of these equations to work out how the angles of incidence and angle of refraction of a substance relates to the velocities of the light in the media or their refractive indexes. Thank you, grade 11s. That is all for this lesson. You will find more information about geometrical optics at www.mindsearch.co.za forward slash learn. Remember to try some of the questions in the task video too. Goodbye.